occupy unannounced entirely too often and get in Molly's hair. Which, by the way, is a completely different shade of red if you're the least bit perceptive. But I live in the city and Molly lives in the city, so there you are. I rest my case. I know the mothers out there, understand? Tepid. Well, we're about midpoint, and I thought you might appreciate a little catching up. Molly's entering her second trimester, and she's not sure who the father is. Could be Hawthorne, could be Moss. And if there's been any talk of wedding bells, I haven't heard it. I don't think Molly knows what she's going to do in that regard. As her mother, I am being as supportive as I can. But it's a strain sometimes. She's also trying to buy this apartment. I never liked it. But she does need a place to live. She's having a hard time scraping together the down payment. My friend Arthur offered to lend her the money. But things didn't work out. I'm still on the case. Speaking of work, Molly's book could be going better, but that's par for the course. Okay, I think that's all the time we have. We're going to go away for a moment now, and when we come back, there'll be a knock at the door, and she'll be so surprised to see me. Surprised, but not pleased. Well, let's settle back and enjoy the days and nights of Molly Dog, shall we? Do I detect a note of sarcasm? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, your timing is perfect. I was uh, just gonna call and tell you. Oh. You're moving? No, I'm uh, just going away for a while. How long is a while? Oh, I should be back tomorrow night. Well, you certainly seem prepared for one night. Ah, uh, well, no, see, uh, this is the country, Mom. I imagine that there will be biking and hiking, tennis, uh, boating. I dinner out at some really elegantly understated country inn. And, of course, Sunday brunch with friends. Sounds romantic. Uh, well. Of course, you don't have to tell me the details of your personal life. You have every right to your privacy, even if it means I have no way of reaching you if something terrible should happen. Mother, if you need to reach me, you can always call Nina. You're going to visit Nina Shapiro? <laughs> Last I heard, you two had had a perfectly ridiculous parting of the ways. Not that it's any of my business. Uh, well, I hesitate to say it, but um, I think that Nina has really changed. I mean, you know, she asked me up to her house upstate, and it seems as if this baby has had a very calming effect. I mean, she basically owned up to the fact that she acted like a jerk, you know, not telling me she was pregnant. She apologized? Uh, well, <sighs> not in so many words. I mean, she managed to get through an entire letter without lashing out at me, which for Nina, is uh, practically the same thing. Well, I'm delighted you two have finally buried the hatchet. Hmm, not in each other's skulls. You see, that is the amazing thing. Now, I think it's time for us to become friends again. Oh, you've always been friends. Nina's practically a sister. Hmm, oh, yeah, maybe that's why we never really got along in the first place. Now, I think this is the perfect opportunity to tell her face to face about my pregnancy. It's something that she was not able to do for me. Is there anything I can do for you while you're gone? Oh, well, I suppose you could water the plants. You know, I haven't really had a chance to vacuum lately, and, uh, boy, that old kitchen floor isn't gonna wax itself. 
You know, if there's time, you might want to write out a rent check and drop it in the mail. Maybe finish that fourth chapter of my book. It's no trouble. No trouble at all? Consider it done. I assume you're running late. How could you tell? 39 years of close observation. How are you getting up there, anyway? Nina's picking me up at the train. You know, if I miss this, it'll really be the end of our friendship. Okay. I never would have guessed it would be such a change living up here. Everyone is so rural. Well, that uh, happens a lot out in the country. Uh, you know, and speaking of changes, Nina, I've uh, had some changes in my life, too. Was that the baby? Uh, did you hear Ruby? Uh, you know, the only thing I can hear is, uh, I mean, what is that thing I hear, anyway? Oh, the sump pump. So the basement doesn't flood. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's living in the country is for the birds. I mean, when things go wrong out here, there isn't exactly a super you can call. Uh, what I wanted to tell you is that something big is, uh... Keep talking, Molly. I can hear you. I, well, I was just telling you about the change in my life. Oh, look at you. You're the baby, 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 baby. <laughs> but, of course, that can wait. <gasps> Ruby is an absolutely perfect baby. And she takes up every single minute of my time. Can you imagine if she wasn't perfect? Well, no, I honestly can't imagine you having less than a perfect child. Oh. So, everything's good with you? Uh, well, as I started to say, good and complicated. <laughs> I'm listening. Oh. Well, uh, as I was saying, it just seems that my life is so very complicated. Yes, I know. Your life is always complicated. I worry about you, but never stop being complicated. You know what's complicated? Trying to meet people in a brand new place when you have zero free time. Now that's complicated. You know, I was just wondering about that. I, yeah, uh, what it would be like, you know, suddenly living in a completely different place. You know, because I've actually been considering that. I mean, given the situation. Does the blouse work? Uh, well, yes, uh, it's perfect. <laughs> it's been so long since I've had any reason to get dressed up, I've forgotten how to do it. I'm really looking forward to talking to you, Nina. <laughs> You've been here all afternoon. We've done nothing but talk. Well, yes, but I... Well, so what do you mean? Well, uh, finishing sentences, completing thoughts, listening, responding. All those little conversational gambits we used to know and love. I don't know why she isn't sleeping. She must sense someone else in the house. Oh, it's amazing how sensitive she is. Just like her mother. Yes to the scarf? Oh, well, you look lovely, Nina. So I gather it's dinner out. Oh, I can't wait. Do you have any idea how long it's been since I went out to dinner? Well, I'm looking forward to tonight, too. It'll be a chance to catch up. I know. This is the first chance you've really had to spend time with Ruby. Ruby? Oh, you mean we're bringing Ruby? Of course not. Ruby's staying here. I'm supposed to stay here with Ruby? You didn't think you were going out with me and Dale, did you? I mean, that would be just a little odd. Ah. Let me get this straight. You're going on a date. It's Saturday night, if you didn't notice. Uh, you asked me if you're to babysit? I invited you here because I wanted to see you, and I thought you'd want to see my baby, too. Well, yes, I do. So what's the problem? Well, it's just... Shh, shh, shh. Oh, can she actually be sleeping? These are the moments I really cherish. Let me just make sure. You know, I just thought it would be different. I'm listening. I guess I just can't believe you're actually going on a date. Hey. If you had any idea how long it's been since I've been on a date, you might just be a little more generous. I spend practically every minute of every day with Ruby. And the local man department is seriously understocked. Do you know where I met Dale? The hardware store, Molly. I went there on a Saturday morning because I heard that's where they all go. You have absolutely no idea what my life is like. And you never could, because you don't have a child. 
Nina, if you told me all this before, maybe I'd feel differently, you know? And uh, as for the baby part of it... That's Dale. Ah, Nina, he sounds charming. <sighs> okay, so maybe I forgot to tell you I had a date. The fact is, I have a lot in my mind. Not that I'd expect you to understand. Do I look okay? Uh, you look great. Yeah, well, this storm's gonna absolutely nuke my hairdo. Anything you need to know, it's written down inside the cupboard. Ruby's practically asleep, so you won't have to do a thing. The TV gets one channel pretty well. Nice talking to you, Neen. Ah. Ruby, what does anybody know about sump pumps? Oh, oh, hello. Uh, yes, uh, in Manhattan, the number of a David McQuinn? Right. Thank you. Die. Yes. Evening, Davy. Listen, I'm really sorry to bother you, but I am in the middle of a crisis here, and you're the only person I could think of who would even know what a sump pump is. Right. Sump pump. I, it, let me describe the problem, and maybe you could uh, suggest a few options. I, uh... Hang on, Ruby! I... What do you know about babies? To you. And you. Uh, yep, life is a Cabernet. Well, in your case, a Chardonnay. Well, pretty swill stuff, baby. My dress used to say that all the time. Back in my old vaudeville days, worked better then. Like everything else. Well, here's to the good old days. Oh, quite a naughty little bouquet. It's too bad you can't enjoy this. Nina has a discriminating taste for wine. Somehow even water tastes better in a wine glass. Presentation is paramount to the dining experience. Oh, and Davy, it was so delicious. I mean, I had no idea you were such a good cook. Oh, I've done my share. Yeah, but I'm the one who really should be cooking dinner for you. I mean, you came all this way and you bailed out me and the basement. Oh, no, it was quite simple. A little finessing with the breaker and the pump started right up. Mm -hmm. I prefer candlelight myself. Gosh, it's so secluded here, huh? You and me, and baby makes three. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely setting, wouldn't you say? Oh, you know, if you twist my arm, I could learn to enjoy this. Then you'd be needing someone to help you out, you know, take care of the garden and such. No, yeah, that would be nice. You know what I'd really like to do? I'd like to move to Italy and raise my child. But uh, with my job, my apartment... Anything can be done, Miss Dodd. You and me could pack up and sell everything. Oh, sounds like just what I need, getting away from it all. You know, I'm an agreeable traveler. Italy. Oh, what a nice thought. Nina? Well, what are we here? <laughs> Hello, Davy. Oh, there was a power outage, and the sump pump stopped pumping or something. The uh, basement got a little wet. Oh, my God. Everything's under control now. Yeah, I, I called Davy because I had no idea what to do. Didn't you read my contact sheet? Taped inside the cupboard? 
Nina, it was dark. I could barely see the phone. How's Ruby? Nothing happened to Ruby. She's fine. She's been asleep for a couple of hours. Yeah, well, I'd better go check on her. I, I just checked her five minutes ago. She was sound asleep. Uh, Rain Show put Miss Dodd into her frenzy. Well, it had quite a soothing effect on little Ruby. Uh, she's precious, all right. A perfect gym. You didn't put an extra blanket on her, did you? She can't sleep with too much on top of her. No, just what was in the crib. The pink receiving blanket. No, she doesn't like that one. Beware, Miss Dodd. The effects of an overprotective single mother can wreak permanent damage. That child is just too adorable for words. Well, you two look as if you've been having a good time. Actually, we have. How was your day? Oh, I don't know. Tiring. That's it? Tiring? He's not bad looking. You should have brought him in with you. We could have judged for ourselves. Well, did you at least go to a nice restaurant? Semi-nice. And what did you have? I didn't have a bite to eat. I, I, that always happens on the first date. You know, you're starving, but somehow when the food arrives, you can't eat. I'll heat up some of this chicken Kiev for you. Thanks, Davy. So? <laughs> There's not much to tell. <sighs> we talked. I watched him eat. We talked some more, and then he brought me home. Oh, Nina, come on. What's the story? Oh, I don't even know, Dale. Oh, you know, I think you like him when you're this evasive. I had a miserable time, okay? I didn't eat my dinner because I was repulsed, watching him talk with his mouth full of food. Then he proceeded to get drunk. So I made him sit and drink coffee and talk before I let him drive me home. Oh, I'm sorry, Nina. Bon appetit. Thank you. Don't feel sorry for me, Molly. I mean, that would really be the capper on this night. Just because you never have any problems going out and having a fun time with that personality of yours. Wine? Sure. The problem with you is you've never really hated men. That's fine. Maybe you never will. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I mean, my life is not all that simple. There have been one or two nights in my life that have not been fun. Tonight was probably the biggest crisis you've had to face all year. <laughs> and you end up sitting down, having a lovely evening. Nina, I was out of my mind. I was panicked. I mean, if it hadn't been for Davy here, your entire basement would have been flooded. And God knows what kind of horrible things would have happened. That's very reassuring. Coming from someone who's caring for your child for the evening. Ah, now, it's not as if I volunteered for that job. You literally dumped it on me. I mean, I thought we were going to spend some time together. Molly. I spent all my time trying to support Ruby and myself. Raise her. I exhaust every moment. And it's very rare, if ever, that a man looks at me like he'd want to... Let alone ask me out on a date. I don't sleep. I'm constantly behind schedule. You have no idea what kind of pressure I'm under every day of the week. Nina, I'm pregnant. Really? Really. You weren't going to tell me, were you? No, of course I was going to tell you. You're still mad because I didn't tell you when I was pregnant. No, it has nothing to do with that. I just thought that things would turn out different than they did. I mean, I figured we'd spend some time together, you know, and then we'd have a heart-to-heart -heart like we used to. It's been a long time. It has. Well, aren't you going to congratulate me? Oh, of course. Oh, oh. oh. Congratulations. Oh. <laughs> Copycat. <laughs> when we were kids, remember, we were going to have our kids together. Well, Tommy's not perfect, but it's close. And remember, we were going to marry rich twin brothers, have suburban homes on the same block, and of course, we were going to name our children after each other. Mm -hmm. <sighs> we didn't know what we were in for. No. Babes in the woods. Well, it's just about time for me to be heading home now. Oh, no. Oh, it's too late. Why don't you stay the night? You can drive home in the morning. Nope. Wide awake now. Besides, my job is done here. Davy, I think I'll come with you. I thought you were spending the night. Well, no, I was planning to, but... What, are you mad? No, no, of course not. It's just I'd have to take the early train in the morning anyway. I've got to work tomorrow. It, it's still raining out. I don't want Davy to drive home alone. Whatever you want. Okay, Miss Dodd, I'd better get your things together. Okay, I'll just be a second. I'll, I'll get my bag. Give Ruby a kiss. What? It was nice to see you again, Davy. Pleasure, Nina. Wish you all the best. Ruby's a fine young lass. Thank you. I hope she has someone to watch over her someday the way you do for Molly.
Although I may not be the man some girls think of as handsome, I try my best. <laughs> Thank you for saving the basement. Okay, ready? <clears throat> oh. <laughs> I'm glad you came up. Oh, same here. <sighs> oh. <sighs> Ruby's beautiful. Thank you. Maybe we can meet for lunch in the city. Oh, well, sure, any day. Drive carefully. Looks like day shift's gone. The night shift ain't here yet. Ah, which proves what I've always suspected. You're the only doorman employed in this building. <laughs> the only reliable one, at any rate. Mm. Oh, here, I'll take that. Are you sure? I'll bring it up for you. No, no need. I'll be fine. Well, thanks for everything, Davy. I appreciate it. Nice spending time with you, Miss Dodd. Mm. Short road trips, always a pleasure. You know, I didn't even know you had a car and what a car it is. My caddy's one of my pride and joys. It doesn't seem quite you, though, Davy. Bought it from one of the King's bodyguards in 72. Uh, the King? Elvis. You know, Davy, you constantly surprise me. Keeps the relationship fresh. <laughs> I suppose so. Well... I guess I should be going up then. Yep. Better get some sleep. Mm. Davy. Yes? Well, I just want you to know you're coming to save me. It really meant a lot to me. You don't need to say a thing, Miss Dodd. We'll always have Italy. È vero. Buonanotte.